In the last video, we created this wireframe from the sketch. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a high fidelity design. So I'm just going to hit A and create another iPhone Pro screen. By the way, instead of doing that, we could also just holding option. We could just copy this thing, copy our frames. Well, that's another that's another thing we can do. But I'm just going to create this frame for now. And what I'm going to do is select my wireframe frame and my regular frame that I just made, this new one. And I'm going to here go here to corner radius and I'm just going to hit 40 there. So that makes these nice corners. I, know I like working like that kind of. I'm going to move this a little bit that way and I'm just going to call the screen design. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and I'm just creating this box and putting it in the side and notice how it snaps to the edges when I put it all the way to the edges at 375. And this box needs to be 375 by 225, which I could just enter in here as well. So I'm going to enter 225. If I hit this box and if I double click on it, I can actually come to the side here and I can click these corners and I could really like break this box around and do whatever I want. So knowing that I'm holding shift and just moving the box up to notice how it's changing to about 183 right there. So I'm just doing that. Now I'm just going to change the name of this item at the top. By default, it's called rectangle two, and I'm just going to call it uh, quick contact BG for background. I want to now make this item into a gradient. So by default, we see here that it's a, there's a fill color. And if I choose that fill and if I go under solid and go linear, I can create a gradient. And basically I can have, I can choose the top color here and choose another color at the bottom, changing the transparency to 100%. And you could see here there's a nice uh, fade. And you can move the gradient around depending on which direction you want it to fade. And I kind of want to have it from all the way from the side, from the left side to the right side, all the way to the edge. So this is my left side and this is my right side. And the left side is going to have this nice blue color, which is something like that. And the right side is going to have this kind of more purplish bluish color. Now I want to change the background of the screen from white to this other blue color. And you can basically click this and just really, you know, choose any color you want, but I'm going with that color. So now I'm just going to open up Unsplash real fast. I want to find a person to show you how to make profiles very quickly. So I could take this picture, for example, I could do copy and I can just paste it right in. So now we have this picture in there and it's in this frame automatically. That's how that's how images kind of work in Figma. So I'm just like adjusting this and it's automatically keeping everything in this nice frame. So I'm going to go in here. We remember that these were 70 by 70. So I'm going to go in here, but it's 70 by 70. So I know it's going to be something like that around this area. And I can change the border corner radius to like 100. And I'm just going to take this text and come in here and just paste it. So now we have this text with the name. And I'm just going to change the font here. By the way, Figma comes with a bunch of pre-loaded Google fonts, which is amazing. And it also loads a lot of your system fonts. And there's more, there's a, other ways to load more fonts. But just for you to know that there's a lot of fonts. <laughs> but stepping away from the fonts for now, let's say we want to make this into a dynamic way to have a lot of different profiles, which is really, really cool. I could change this to the name profile image. So let's create this into a component. I'm just choosing the item and I'm coming up here and clicking this create component button. And now you could see that this is a component and you can see on the side that it has a different icon. I'm duplicating the component and making a few more instances of the components because these three are instances of this component. What I could do is I can come to this component and I can, whatever I change to that component, like add some kind of effect or make it transparent, which you can come here and make it, make the item let's say 50% transparent. I'm just changing and making it 50% transparent. And all three items are all also becoming 50% transparent and they also have that effect as well on them. But if I go to each item individually and I want to change that to, let's say 100% that one, and let's say 5% this one, I can individually touch them. It might, so it might seem a little confusing for now, but I promise you it's a very powerful thing. And as we get a little bit further, you'll see how really cool it, it is. So I'm just hitting undo command Z to go back in time a little bit. So I just undid that. And now this item is uh, still a component. And what I'm going to do is just go a little bit in the future and, and bring in a few more uh, profile images. So I went ahead a little bit to save you some time and imported in a few more images and created and converted each of them into a component profile image one, two, three, and so on. 
because now we've created these into components, I could come here next to the layers, there's a little icon that says assets. I can click on that and you could see here that we have our components on the side. So I can come here and just drag uh, these components out. And like we said earlier, if I come into the master, these are just all instances of the component. If I come to the master and I change, like I'm hitting two right now to change the transparency, you can see they all changed. So when you have a really large app with, with hundreds of screens, you just literally change one of these components and it updates everywhere, very, very cool. I'm deleting these out of the screen now, I'm going back to the layers. And also what you wanna do for organization, I'm hitting A to create a new artboard and I'm just hitting the artboard like that. By default, it's calling it frame one. And I'm gonna change it from that to have it say profile images. So now when I go to assets, you could see when I hit under profile images, now it's kind of organized. So when I have a bunch of more components, I'll organize them nicely for you. Things won't be all over the place. So let's take one of these profiles now and put it over here. I'm gonna take that text that we made earlier and just put it over here. Another thing we can do is we could actually have components within other components. I'm choosing both of these items and I'm going to component and just hitting create. So now we have an item in there that's a component and one that's just text. Just duplicating this item and bringing it down. And let's just take that away. So that was 80 down and 20 from the left. So you could see I'm holding the option so I can measure that. So I'm just holding option and moving up so I can see it's 80 from the top and 20 from the left. And I think I have that name a little bit too low. So let's just come back up here and move that a little bit. And you can see that we moved it here as well. I'm holding option and just duplicating that profile 10 pixels away. Now I'm hitting command D and just copied more multiple profiles. So now what I could do here is I can actually double click inside of there and I can come here where it says instance and I can change from, because we created those organized components, I can come here, the default is profile image one. Now I'm clicking profile image two, choosing that one again, choosing profile image three and so on and so forth. So as an example with the names, <laughs> I could just go in here and put different, you know, different names. And if I change this name to, let's say like the fonts to like a black or something like that, you can see they're all, or like a red. So you can see that easier. So they all change to red and these ones all change to red because I'm changing that main component. I'm gonna undo right now and just delete these out of here. So now you understand how this works and I'm just gonna come in here and change all these names. I also wanna have a situation where certain names are selected. Let me show you what I mean by that in the, in the wireframe. So I'm just gonna duplicate the circle and make it smaller. I'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit and choose the circle and I'm actually gonna come over here on the fill and choose it. And if I hit this eyedropper, I can actually eyedrop this color. I'm selecting this color and whatever color I choose, it puts it in that circle. So now I'm hitting, there's also something called a pen tool. I haven't showed you that yet. So it's come here, it's the pen tool. And pretty much I wanna just make a really quick check. I'm just clicking, clicking and clicking. And I made a quick little check. This is just very, very fast just to show you what I mean. So this is a, this is just a situation where something is selected and I forgot to do that in the wireframing process, but I wanted you to see how to do that. So now we wanna make a high fidelity version, version of that. So let's try to come over here and I just copy that little circle and I'm pasting it. It's actually 28 by 28 dimension wise. I'm going to come over here and change it to 23 by 23. Very nice. Then I'm going to come here on the side and hit this little minus key to delete the stroke completely. And I'm going to choose this item again and I'm going to just choose white, just pure white. And I'm going to put it on top here in the component. And notice here how it puts it on all the other ones as well. Let's actually put that down here. So you could see as it's happening in real time. I'm gonna zoom in on it a little bit and choose a little circle. And I'm just gonna add a little shadow. So here I'm gonna go to effect and it just puts a little shadow. I could come here in the shadow and kind of adjust it. Let's have it a little more subtle. It's a 25% by default. I'm just changing it to 10%. Then I'm going back for that little check that we made here and I'm coming back over here and putting it and just pasting it. And just when I paste it, I put it in that place. You can't really see it. And I'm going to just, I'm going to change this check from like a white to like a darker color so we could see it. And I'm going to put it just down a little bit. So it's kind of more aligned. I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit more. 
I normally create my icons in a program called Illustrator, but although Figma is a very, very good tool to make icons in as well, very powerful. I'm just gonna make a couple little adjustments here, move that down. I could come in the stroke actually and change the stroke weight from a one to a two. Makes it a little bit fatter and I can just make a couple more adjustments. And I don't want the corners to be so sharp, so I come in here and I hit this little side. And then where it says none under this menu, I hit to round. And notice how I made it round, not nice and clean, kind of works with this design better. And I'm just coming out and you can see they all have selected. So by default, I'm gonna come here and choose that little arrow. I'm gonna zoom back in again. I'm gonna come and select both these items and I'm gonna, while they're both selected, I'm hitting Command G, so I'm having them grouped. And I'm just changing this name to check. I'm choosing the check again and I'm coming over here where the check is and I'm hitting this eyeball which turns it off and on. So I'm turning it off by default, so that way they're all off. By default, I'm moving that component back over here. Even though I turned it off in the main component, see there are all these are turned off. You could see here, 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 they're all turned off by default. But let's say I wanna turn this one on, like the way that we have it in our example, in our wireframe. So I'm coming here, choosing this one, and I'm just turning just that one on. So it's a dynamic way to control this stuff. This is really, really powerful. Before I forget, let me show you this other trick. I'm holding shift and just selecting these uh, profile image items and I'm just grouping them. So now I have this group and I just call, I'm just gonna call this group to quick contacts. Because they're all equal spaced, the program is smart enough to detect that I can actually move them around equally in space. I like them being away 10 pixels from each other, but I just wanted to show you this cool little trick. Keep in mind the reason that we went ahead and created these all into components also is so we can do these quick little tricks. Without them being components, we wouldn't be able to accomplish some of this stuff. So now I'm just gonna add a quick little contact here. So now we're gonna have the word contacts, which will be 20 pixels from the top and 20 pixels from the left. Right now it's 42. I'm holding option and I'm moving my arrow key so I'm seeing all these alignments which is really helpful for me. And pretty much the same way that we just made that check mark, I created this filter icon as well just to save you some time. And I'm gonna have that 25 from the top which that's what it is and it's going to be 85 from the side. I'm gonna group these together and press command G and then I'm gonna call it top of contacts. Now I'm gonna come back to the top here where we were earlier and let's take one of these profiles and actually move it down next to our reference. So we have first name at the top here. Let's just put it right here. First name at the top and last name at the bottom. So it'll be something around there. So we'll put the first name at the top here and then we'll copy that, duplicate that. And then we'll put last name. I wanna make this font really, really big actually. So I'm gonna change that to 50 and make it a little heavier. So let's change that to medium, perfect. Let's actually take the name off and just keep just the word first. Move that up a little bit. Normally good to measure everything out. And I'm gonna actually choose this and I'm gonna hit five on my keyboard. So I'll change the opacity to 50% and change the font to about 20. Put it a little bit lower. I'm gonna have both of these selected and hit Command G to group them. They're about seven pixels away. We can do about five. That Those numbers are not exactly accurate because these live in boxes which add extra pixels, but it is good to have things nicely aligned in general. Now I'm gonna choose our instance of that component that we made earlier and choose this group as well. And I'm gonna make another component out of that. So now we have our regular context components. So let's actually take that out of here. So we can have all our components in one place and we can have our instances of those components. So I'm just gonna leave that over here. And from component seven, I'm gonna call it profile list. Just to keep things organized, I'm gonna take our profile list instance of that component and put it over here, 20 pixels from the side and 20, and it should be 20 pixels from the top, very nice. Now I'm gonna take that instance and put it about 20 pixels from the top and I'm gonna hit Command D like we did earlier to duplicate our action. And I showed you earlier how we can come here and we can go to profile and we can change this on the side and just change it to other images if we want. There's actually another way to do this, a little more visual way. Let me just show you that really quick right now. So I can come here on the asset side and if I want this image to replace that image, I can choose the image, bring it out. I could either just leave it wherever I want to leave it, or I could choose the image and I could hold option and command and notice how that box is turning purple and it literally just replaces that image. So it's literally that replacement of it. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of the images really quickly. So the same way I can just come over here and change the names like we did earlier. I'm going to put Bob Smith. And I'm just going to go ahead and change all the other names very quickly. So I went ahead and added all the other names, first name and last name. And I also created our app button similar to how we did the check mark just to save a little time. And that should be 20 pixels from the right and 20 pixels from the bottom. This gradient, by the way, is the exact same gradient as that one. So they're both just the exact same gradient. A quick way to duplicate a gradient, I can show you an example. So I'm just creating this box so I can go into this gradient, right click on it, go to copy paste and just do copy properties. And I can come here and just do paste properties and it copies the gradient. That's how I kind of made that gradient. So checking over here, our last part is this little bar left. This is just a quick shortcut for people to be able to scroll through very quickly. So I'm just going to create a box very fast, which is going to be 28 in width and 494 in height. And I'm going to add a ra corner radius. Let's just say 100. And it's about five pixels from the side. So I'm just putting that look. At, so I'm just holding option and it's showing me seven pixels here and then I'm moving it and now we know it's five pixels and it should be 215 from the top. So I'm holding option and pressing up and down to adjust that and move it. And I could see that it's changing the numbers and I'm keeping it at 215 from the top. Then again, I'm copying that gradient. I'm choosing the item, right clicking it, going in and pasting the gradient. And notice when I pasted the gradient, it also messed up my corner radius and I could just go in there and change it again. But instead of doing that, let me just show you another way, a better way to potentially do that. So instead of choosing properties and just selecting all of them, you can just choose individual ones. So I could come here on the side, notice my arrows here on the side, and I'm just kind of clicking it here and I'm just pressing Command C, coming over here and hitting Command V. And that's just a way to not copy all the properties, just to copy individual properties. And this bar is appear appearing too dominant for my taste, so I'm just choosing it and putting it down to 10%. And I could also just do that by hitting one. And now looking at it on the second thought, I really don't want to have that gradient there at the bar. I just want to kind of show you how to do it. And so I'm just going to select it and I'm going to go to the fill and delete it, delete it, and then hit plus. So I deleted the fill. Now we just have this gray color and I want to do this blue color instead. And I'm also going to hit 10. So just have that at 10%. So I want to add some letters here. So I'm just coming here and choosing that name. I'm copying it and then I'm coming over here, hitting this Thing, and then I'm just hitting paste. So now we have this text and I'm just hitting A, hitting return, hitting B, hitting return, hitting C, hitting return, hitting D. And I'm going to skip forward a little bit and just add the rest of them. So now we have the rest of the letters, kind of putting that over here. And so I'm making a crooked on purpose again because I want to show you that one more time. So I'm choosing both layers, this layer and this layer. And then I'm going to actually zoom out so you can see a little bit better. I'm going to come here and align it from left to right and align it from top to bottom. And I feel like this font's a little heavy actually. So let's maybe change that to a lighter version. I think that's a little stronger. This one as well is a little heavy. So I'm going to come back over here. file image also to a little bit of a lighter version of that same font. I felt like that one was a little bit too heavy. Very nice. Let's move down here and everything looks good. But I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way that turned out. Before this video is over, I also just wanted to mention that you noticed how I was undoing a lot of steps and kind of going back in history and by hitting Command Z. And pretty much I just wanted to mention that this application, everything's kind of saved in the cloud. So you can really undo forever pretty much. I think the, um, I believe the free account you can undo for 30 days and you can still come back. So all your history and everything gets saved, which is so powerful. And there, I think the paid version think you could literally go in history back forever but just something something to take note in the next video i'll show you how to make a realistic prototype where things are actually moving and animating